Hi, my name is Alvaro from Pingo, and I'm here today with Igor Lagreca to present you how you can run a digital workshop using Miro. To start, we can have a look at a totally free Pingo's Big Picture, which is a project map that shows step by step how you can create products and projects in agile and hybrid environments. In this case, let's choose Agile and have a look at this map. It's separated into different phases. The first, conception, is where the solution is outlined. Then, on the maturing phase, the product is initially detailed and then built in the sprint phase. On the upper layers, you have the program view and then the portfolio view. When the project or product ends, it goes to the discontinuation phase. So to run the design thinking process in this example, we are going to use canvases from the conception phase. So let's begin. In this case, your company has identified that a certain group of users has a need or problem to be solved. And let's consider that this problem is aligned with the strategic objectives of the company. So one initial step is to run a design thinking process. The goal is to better understand the problem, brainstorm ideas, and then select one or more ideas as a solution to be validated with the users. Typically, we will run this into a face-to-face -face workshop, but now let's see how we can do this digitally with a remote team. So let's jump into Miro. Miro is an amazing tool. The first thing that we can see is how we arrange the canvas. There are four canvases in this case. We have first the problem canvas, where we discuss the problem and its root causes. We also have the idea canvas, where we gather ideas in a brainstorm session. And then we have the idea filter canvas, where we classify the ideas into these four quadrants, based on two axes. The first axis is called confidence, meaning how confident is the team that they will deliver the solution in a certain time frame. The higher the confidence is, the lower the risk. Secondly, we have relevance, which is the capacity of the idea to effectively solve the user's problem. So in this example, we have a toy company that's analyzing the fact that for the target audience of six to nine years old girls, they get bored quite quickly with their real dolls. Therefore, they are moving to a digital doll, which means more screen time. In this case, the team has identified already certain root causes, as we can see in this fishbone diagram. The reason for these girls getting bored quite quickly is mostly related to the certain limitations regarding rag dolls such as not being able to interact much or even change hair or skin. It's important to notice that the closest to the tail of the fish, the lower the influence of the root causes in the problem. On the other hand, if the root cause is positioned close to the head of the fish, it indicates high influence in the problem. So the idea here is to have everyone in the team able to participate at the same time, which is awesome. So let's see the example. Igor here is creating now a new root cause called Rag Dolls Can Be Shared With Friends. As a second step, we bring one or more of these root causes to the center of the idea canvas and start asking the team what are the possible solutions or ideas to actually solve or at least minimize the effect of these root causes in the problem. Depending on the root cause, by solving it, eventually you'll be solving the problem as well. So let's do it. For the root cause, rag dolls don't interact much, we can see that Igor is now writing new ideas to solve it. Create a doll that can redesign part is one great idea. I have myself written also some ideas as you can see. And then we move to the last step, which is idea filter. We have now a lot of ideas and the goal here is to select one or more ideas that actually can be validated with the users and move forward to the next steps of the Pingo's flow. The ideas can be classified in the BAU or sweet spot or even valuable risk areas, all done digitally through the discussion with the team. Eventually, we will reach a certain point in a certain idea, for example, in the sweet spot, which is select as a chosen one. So in our example, we can see that the selected idea is create a map that speaks for her. Cool. So having the idea selected is now time to validate with the users. It's important to notice that the parking lot of ideas follow the whole process and is used in many ways. First, to bring ideas that after the filtering were not selected, but are still valuable. They may be used in the future. 
The parking lots also use it when you have ideas from previous workshops that you may want to include in your idea canvas. There are many variations, especially when you have a big team. You may want to split the team into subgroups and then consolidate the outcomes into a central canvas, or you may want to make them work separately. That's all good. And that's it. You now have a better idea on how to run a remote workshop. And thank you for watching. Wish you a great work with your team.